Today on Rock the Park. Here we go, for the dream. We're in the mountain biking capital of the country. I get why you come to Moab and always bring a bike. Helping a buddy test out new technology that will enhance lives. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, dude. And making some epic discoveries. We are looking at a dinosaur track. This is Moab, and we're all getting in on the action. I'm going to be the one that makes it. Yeah, you are. And it all starts right now. I'm Jack Stewart. This is the real deal. And I'm Colton Smith. These are mountains. We've been buddies for years. Always in search of the next adventure. Dude, what was that? We share a passion for our national parks and other wild places around the world. Oh my god. Man. Heading off the beaten path, pushing our limits, and experiencing nature's best kept secrets. Here we go! <laughs> it's how we rock the park. We're flying downhill on Slick Rock Sandstone. Big dip right there, big dip. <laughs> with two mountain bikes and one hand pedal tricycle. And having way too much fun. Oh man. This is awesome. We're just outside of Moab, a city in southeastern Utah that's been dubbed the outdoor adventure hub of America. This small desert town is the launch pad to more than 18 million acres of public lands and two national parks, all featuring stunning rocky red mountains, mesas, and canyons. What makes this place so awesome is the fact that you've got all these different activities that you can do right in this area. I mean, we've got some awesome rivers, great mountain biking terrain, there's hiking, there's climbing, canyoneering, you name it, you can do it here. We are going mountain biking. This is some of the greatest biking terrain, arguably in the entire world, and it's right here in Moab. Moab has over 100 different mountain biking trails, from easy winding dirt roads that hug the Colorado River to steep technical trails along ledges. Our goal today is to get to a spot where we can see the surrounding parks and find evidence of some awesome creatures who roamed these canyons more than a million years ago. We're talking dinosaur tracks. Now, it's not gonna be just us out on the trail. We are meeting up with our buddy, Joe Stone, who is just one of the most hardcore dudes I have ever met in my life. Joe Stone is an avid outdoorsman, an athlete, and an incomplete C7 quadriplegic. He damaged his spinal cord in a speed flying accident in 2010, leaving him paralyzed from the chest down with impairment in both of his hands. Since then, Joe has advocated for others with disabilities, showing by example that a physical limitation doesn't mean you have to give up an active lifestyle or a love of the outdoors. Yo! We made it. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you too, man. We are, we're always meeting in like the coolest places. The last time we saw Joe was in Montana, where he paraglided down to us off of a mountain. Man, he can maneuver that thing like it's nothing. Oh, man. Joe taught us how to hand cycle up the Going to the Sun Road in Glacier National Park, and then joined us on a grueling hike, his first night camping in the backcountry since his accident. Yeah. I'm going to call this good. This is good. Yeah, man. Joe is the first known quadriplegic to compete in an Ironman competition, and his personal passion is encouraging disabled and able-bodied people to share adventures, just like what we're doing today. Yeah, I'm pumped. I've wanted to come here mountain biking as well for a really long time. This area itself works really well for people with disabilities if they're on trikes, whether it's a foot pedal trike or a hand pedal trike, yeah. because it's just so good to, to ride here for things that are wider. We'll be riding Klondike Bluffs Trail, which is an area managed by the Bureau of Land Management. The trail includes a lot of sand, boulders, and outcroppings of slick rock. That's the smooth weathered sandstone that can be dangerous to hikers, but is perfect for biking. It's also open to four-wheelers and other motorized vehicles, making it ideal for Joe to test out a new hand cycle prototype. It's got power assistance on it. So it's got a little motor that while I'm cranking, it engages the motor to whatever percentage you want it to engage. And 
It's kind of funny, I used to be kind of against all of that, so I'm like, oh, I can do it on my own. I don't need a motor to help me. And then I used it for the first time, so I was like blown away because the only difference is the workout's the same, I just got to see more, yeah. you know? I'm really excited to see how well it'll work where I can ride my style of mountain bike while you guys ride your style of mountain bikes and us all go together. The next morning, we're up early at the trail, and as we take off, we're immediately challenged by a stretch of deep sand. I might let you go first, and then I'll go through there. Cool. Whoa! A little deep, a little deep. Sorry, guys. So, <laughs> should have let you go first. Good start. Not looking good here. <laughs> Maybe not for us, but Joe cranks right through it. Dude, the power systems, amazing. And it, uh, having the stability with the two wheels. Yeah, this like ability to like move this thing is so cool. Oh, bad start for us, good start for you. So there you go. <laughs> Everything Joe needs to operate his hand cycle is at his fingertips, steering, shifting, braking, and operating the power assist. As a person with a disability, it's I feel pretty fortunate that we have access to the technology we have today because it wasn't that long ago there's no way i could be cranking out here no way to access it and it's a beautiful way to explore the environments around us or at least get stuck in them not gonna lie this sand is a little challenging again oh ah and again so not even close We are mountain biking in Moab, Utah with our buddy Joe Stone, who is testing out a new adaptive hand cycle designed for people with sure. disabilities. It's tricky. And so far, this trail has been quite a challenge. More sand. Deep, oh, deep sand. Oh, not even close. Oh. Ah, I almost made it. I'm gonna be the one that makes it. Yeah, you are. Slowly. Oh, there it is. We finally push through the sandy section and are instantly rewarded with some incredible scenery. From parts of this trail, you can see two national parks off in the distance. Right next to Moab is Canyonlands National Park and Arches. And look at this. You've got this like Mesa cliffside with just these absolutely crazy rock formations jetting off of them. I gotta get a drink of water here pretty quick. Yeah, totally, I know. It's uh, this dry, arid climate, it just zaps it out of you. Ooh. Joe picked the perfect time to take a break. Is that a jackrabbit? Yeah. The black-tailed jackrabbit is one of the largest hares in North America. Hares are herbivores and only eat plants like shrubs and grasses, which provide both calories and much needed water. That's especially important here in Moab, which only gets an average annual rainfall of nine inches. There he goes. That was so awesome. This desert hare just came running in and he was massive and his ears were like this long. It's so cool. You know, you look out and you see this landscape that just seems like what could survive here, but there's so many animals like that that are not only surviving, but thriving. And part of that is thanks to an unexpected source, the soil itself. So check this out, like right off the trail here, we've got that like cryptobiotic soil. This soil right here is living and it's very much essential for this entire landscape that we see around us. It's really retaining the nutrients that all these different plants, shrubs need to survive in this arid climate. The soil has different organisms living inside of it that are invisible to the naked eye, like algae, bacteria, and fungi. Together, they create a crust, kind of like a glue binding the soil together to help retain water and prevent erosion and runoff from wind and rain. Some of the lighter stuff up here definitely looks newer, but then just 10 feet forward, you see that black, darker cryptobiotic soil, and that could be decades old. Which is kind of amazing, right? That like right off of this like pretty highly used trail, this stuff is still intact. This is a great example of how important it is to just stick to the trails. 
which is no problem for us because the trail just keeps getting more and more fun. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there we go. Oh man. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, terrain's getting a little uh little dice here, huh? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> a little more technical. And perfect for Joe to see what his hand cycle can really do. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, dude. Nice. Well done. I saw that suspension doing its work. Yeah, totally. Suspension is working great. The steeper, uneven sections are where we've had to make this a team effort. I might actually need like a spotter on this, to be honest. Yeah. OK. Let's see how it goes. Oh, that's not going to work. Hang on, let's back up. I'm going to try to go a little more to the right, so, so I'll, uh, I'll try to yeah, help like this. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Sweet. There we go. Yeah. Thanks, dudes. It's that teamwork. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well, this is, so this is like, honestly, everything I've ever heard and like videos I've watched and research I've done on Moab, like, this is everything and more. Just what little bit we've already done has been so much better than most of the trails I'm used to. That's awesome. It's amazing. And the best is yet to come. We are looking at a dinosaur track. We're about two miles into our mountain bike trek in Moab, Utah with our buddy Joe Stone. And we've just hit another steep section where Joe needs a hand. Yeah. So this, should I just push the wheel up? There we go. Good. Sweet. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, this is going to get a little interesting up here. Very rocky. The next hill forces both Colton and me off our bikes. Whoa. But for Joe, the trike helps him more easily navigate the obstacles. Oh yeah, look at that bike flex. That's cool. From here, we're just a few minutes from where the trail starts to climb, and that's our cue to begin looking around. Ooh, guys, we're uh, definitely at the Slick Rock uphill section, so let's look out for these dinosaur tracks. Awesome, I've been looking forward to this part. Utah is a hotbed for dinosaur discovery. More fossils have been discovered here than in any other state, and it has a more complete record of prehistoric life than any other place on Earth. Moab is no exception. Wow, check oh, this dang, out. Oh, dang, are these them? Yeah, I think so. There are thousands of prints embedded in the rocks in Utah, and these are Allosaurus tracks. This enormous 30-foot-long dinosaur most likely ate smaller dinosaurs. Its serrated teeth were up to three inches long and could cut like a steak knife. I heard that it's all right to pour some water on it to like get a better sense of the yeah. print. Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. That kind of shows it, right? Yep. You've got like the toe there, toe there, the heel. Look how it's like kind of like dug in like that. We're looking at the track from a dinosaur from the Jurassic period. Yeah, that's it's around 165 million years old. To be looking at something and know that it's been sitting here, preserved like this for over 100 million years is just remarkable. Dinosaurs cross the same path that we're crossing right now. It's just mind, kind of mind blowing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So that's the whole track. That's bigger. That is a lot bigger. All right, you guys, we got some serious uphill, but once we get to a decent overlook, we'll start cruising right back down. Perfect. I've never biked on rock like this. This is a brand new one. This is, this is Moab right here. I mean, this is the slick rock that people come from all over the world to bike on. These large expanses of sandstone, which have worn down into slick rock, were formed by petrified sand dunes in ancient seabeds millions of years ago. Early pioneers called it slick rock because their horses would often slip on it. But this stuff actually has the texture of sandpaper, which gives bike tires awesome grip. The terrain is also pretty incredible. It's just rocks. It's almost like you're riding on the street. This power system's amazing. I've only got it on level two of five. Like I'm still working hard. I can feel my 
heart rate going up, my arms are pumping, but uh, I'm able to cover more ground faster. Oh man, yeah. Oh yeah, that's a nice view. We got high fast. You've got Canyonlands right off to the right of us. You've got Arches National Park right up over that hill, basically. We're smack dab in the middle of some of the most amazing scenery in our country right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. This is really cool. And I have a feeling that we haven't really experienced the best part yet. Going down it. But while the Swick Rock's grip helped us on the way up, it has a oh, reputation whoa, whoa, for being whoa. difficult on the way down. Big dip right there, big dip. <laughs> We're in Moab, Utah, getting ready for the payoff of our mountain bike adventure, cruising down a long stretch of the region's infamous Slick Rock. Yeah, I think we need to be like a little cautious, like especially since like all of our first time like going down this. Falling on Slick Rock can really bang you up if you're going too fast. You might not be able to turn or stop when you need to. We should space out a little bit. I think Colton should leave. I think I'll take it. I'll let you know if there's any obstacles up there. We see wheels. Yeah, yeah. Your head, then don't go there. Yeah. <laughs> Here I go! The best technique for mountain biking down Slick Rock is to keep your feet level on the pedals and basically squat on the bike and don't sit. This helps you maintain balance and control on the uneven terrain. This is awesome. What's great about going downhill on this Slick Rock is you've got a lot of room to maneuver here. It's not like single track at all. Little dip. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Big dip right there, big dip. <laughs> I get why you come to Moab and always bring a bike. Man, just incredible scenery everywhere you look. An amazing trail just with ups and downs and different diversity in the terrain. Dinosaur tracks. It's a special place especially because it's accessible to people of all abilities. And even on this bumpy trek downhill, Joe's hand cycle performs amazingly well. So smooth on this thing. Yeah, yeah! And with just a few miles to go, Joe continues to impress me. This is gnarly. Dude, in theory. In theory? You go straight down it. Oh! I love how he, he just like pokes fun at me. I'm like talking about like in theory you could go that way and he just does it. Doing it is what Joe does best. And today he proved once again that having a disability doesn't mean you have to give up what you love to do. All right, we made it. Dude, so much fun. That was amazing. That was a blast. Did it live up to the to the hype? More than, and we did. We only did one section of one trail. There's so much more to explore here. And so it just makes me want to come back. Like, that's what I'm excited about. And it was so cool for us to be able to just go out on a ride today and be able to take in such a, an amazing place together. You yeah. know, that's what it's all about. We talk about how amazing our national parks are. Getting to watch you out there on this brand new rig that you've got, this prototype you're testing out, it just, it reaffirms to me that we gotta do everything we can to make sure that these public lands that are for us are for all of us. You're 100% correct. I think we all need to collectively be working together. I think all communities need to come together and making sure that places like this are is, is as accessible as they can be to as many people as possible. And this trail is a great start. So whether you're on a bicycle or a hand cycle, an expert or a beginner, we can confidently say that Moab is for anyone who is ready to ride. Here we go, for the dream. And remember, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park.
everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.